بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الطلبة الأعزاء السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأهلا ومرحبا بكم في هذا الجزء الثامن من المحور السادس لمادة Theory of Machines والذي بعنوان Gears I will present here in this part some features about a bicyclic gear train In, in a bicyclic gear train, the axis of the shaft on which the gears are mounted may move relative to a fixed axis. We can see here, this axis is moving, is rotating around the main axis here. If the arm is fixed, the gear train is simple and gear A can drive gear B, and vice versa. If this arm it is fixed, so gear A is rotate and drive the gear B. Okay, But if gear A is fixed, let's see now. If gear A is fixed and the arm is rotated about the axis of the gear A, that's mean around the point A01, about this axis, then the gear B is forced to rotate upon and around gear A. So if gear A is fixed, okay, gear B will be rotate upon and around the gear A. It will do like that, okay? Next position, next position, and it will rotate. And the arms too, it rotates. Such a motion is called a cyclic, and the gear trains arranged in such manner that one or more of their members move up and around. Another member as, uh, are known as epicyclic gear trains. So epi mean upon, and cyclic means around. The epicyclic gear train may be simple or compound. The epicyclic gear trains are useful for transmitting high velocity ratio with gears of moderated size in a comparatively lesser space. The epicyclic gear trains can provide high torque ratio in a smaller space. The epicyclic gear trains are used in the back gear of the lathe, differential gears of automobile, and etc. Planetary gears can have two inputs, RPM of sun and ring. The output is the speed of the arm. The following two methods may be used for finding out the velocity ratio of an epicyclic gear train. The first is called tabular method and the second is called algebraic method. These two methods will be discussed in the next parts.